Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa jma'in Rabbi shrahni sadri wa yisirli amri wa ahlu luqbutan min lisani yafqahu qawli so We start off by saying alhamdulillah, we finished our first fast It was very easy, right? I'm sure it was alhamdulillah So we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the month of Ramadan And also alhamdulillah, even in the tarawih, when I came in today, I said mashallah, we're still going strong After the first couple of days, it starts to die down, but inshallah Let's try and keep the energy up, inshallah. So yesterday we talked about the largest chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah. In fact, it is indeed a chapter that we are continuing to recite today. And we mentioned, we mentioned yesterday that such a large chapter, it has to be and must be comprehensive in its nature. And subhanAllah, when we look into this chapter of the Quran, we realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about many things. We talked about the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yesterday. Uh, today we recited the verses Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu dhkhulu fi silmi kafa O you who believe enter into Islam completely, fully with submission And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions the five pillars of Iman We see straight after Tawheed and oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Hafidhu ala salawati wa salati wusta wa qumu lillahi qanitin That protect the obligatory prayers This is something very very important And this is why even in the month of Ramadan we are very, very uh, careful about our obligatory prayers. We see more of a presence in the masjid during this time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, along with salah, wa aqimu salata wa atu zakah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the zakah, which is the third pillar of Islam. 2.5% of our savings in the lunar calendar year must be given to the poor and the needy if we are above the nisab level. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the fasting in the month of Ramadan. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also talks about the obligation of the Hajj. Along with this, there are many other stories that I mentioned. The story of Adam alayhi salam is mentioned right at the start of Juz 1. We have the story of Musa alayhi salam. We have the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about many other situations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about interest and riba. And also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the unique features in this chapter of the Quran or many other places, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the situation of the people who came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to ask him questions. And these were Sahaba, they were Jew, Jewish people, they were the Nasara, they were the people who were the members of the Quraysh. And they used to ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam questions. For example, وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْمَحِيدِ وَيَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْيَتَامَ so here these are some of the questions that were asked what about menstruation what about uh, the orphans what about fighting in the forbidden months and the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to give the answers appropriately when the revelation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came down i want to draw your attention to a few uh, verses regarding legislation allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also talks about uh, marital intimacy and certain aspects that take place sometimes in our life and we don't know the shari'i ruling regarding them for example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says lilladhina yu'luna min nisa'ihim tarabbusu arba'ati ashhur allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about a man who takes an oath to distance himself from his wife in terms of marital intimacy and sometimes this may happen in a marriage because the, person, the husband is angry, there must have been some turbulence in the marriage. But what does it mean to distance yourself? Are you allowed to distance yourself? What does the Sharia say regarding this? This incident also took place in the life of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was, when some of his wives, they became jealous of him visiting the wives of uh, uh, his other wives, the homes of his other wives, and they played a practical joke on this. Uh, on, on him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this that don't make something because at this time the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he made honey haram upon himself and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said why do you make that which is halal haram upon yourself and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he warned the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to not jest with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in this manner and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about legislation pertaining to divorce when we think about divorce, when we, we don't even want to talk about divorce because it's a taboo topic in the community, in the society. But we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has the, the, the greatest hikmah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al hakim And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the specific aspects of the divorce in the Sharia. Just to give you a taster, uh, the, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَالْمُتَلَقَاتُ يَتَرَبَّسْنَ بِأَنفُسِهِنَّ ثَلَاثَةَ قُرُوْ That the, uh, the, the divorce, Last a cycle of three 
menstrual cycles of the woman. And during this time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns the woman that if you have had a marital intimacy with your husband and you are expecting, you are expecting, you should not hide the birth of the child from the husband. Because when obviously when a three month period is going by, nobody can really recognize that a woman is pregnant. Maybe some sisters may be able to recognize it, but amongst the brothers, we are oblivious. We don't uh, look in that direction. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says it's not befitting for a woman who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last day to hide this from the husband. What we learn from this is that the Sharia came to protect the lineage. This is one of the uh, important things that the uh, Sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks more about divorce. When I ask you guys about divorce and I was to just ask a question, what is the process, what is the manner for divorce? How many times should one utter the word divorce? The common misunderstanding is that somebody should say, I divorce you three times or should say talaq, talaq, talaq. And this is the understanding of divorce. This is not the method shown to us by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa What is Imam saying? We've all heard this talaq, talaq, talaq. What's, what's going on here? But when we, see, when we look into the Quran uh, and, and the rulings in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when you utter the divorce, you utter the word once. In fact, the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ mentions this, that when you say the, the divorce, and divorce is something that you can't give in the spare of the moment because you're angry, because you're not getting on. And people sadly, nowadays, they use this as a play, a play as a joke, as a jest. The Prophet ﷺ said in a Hassan hadith that you should not jest in three things. One is the divorce, another is a marriage, and the third is an emancipation of a slave. So when, just like we plan our marriages, we also, if there is turbulence in the marriage, in fact, the hadith in Abu Dawood, the scholars, they say it has a sound narration. Uh, he says, out of the uh, things which are allowed and permissible in Islam, divorce is most disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So look, even when you are navigating through the process of divorce, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the husband and how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects the wife. Just to give you a few examples. If the husband was to utter the word divorce, he cannot divorce his wife when she is on her monthly cycle. If she is on her monthly cycle and he utters the divorce to her, he must take her back during this time. Look how the Sharia protects the, the sisters because this is an emotional time for them. And also if the husband has had marital intimacy with the wife and now they are waiting to see if she's expecting a baby, he's not allowed to pronounce the divorce during this time. Also in another chapter of the Quran, uh, in uh, I can't remember the chapter, I think it's the end of uh, Juz uh, 21. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa regarding his wives. And in this instruction, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when, he, when the divorce is pronounced, the first divorce is pronounced, the cycle of three months starts. This is the first divorce. And during this time, what's the situation of the husband and the wife? Where are they supposed to go? Usually what happens? Tata, bye-bye, I'm going to my father's house. I'm going to get some comfort. I'm going to get some love there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran that the husband should not take his wife out of the home and the wife must stay in the home of the husband for these three months. Unless, they have tra unless she has transgressed beyond the bounds. This is something very, very... Uh, uh, we need to understand this, the hikmah behind this. Because sometimes in the spare of the moment, in an argument, we may get angry. We may think life is greener on the other side. And we may think, yeah, I can do without my spouse. But then when you're in the same household and you're seeing your spouse on a daily basis, you may not be talking to her. She may not be cooking food for you. But that love is still there. That institution of marriage of the Prophet wasallam is still in your heart. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, during this time, if the husband wants to take the wife back, he can take her back on the condition of islah, reconciliation, that you must reconcile. This must be your intention and your sincere niyyah. So we see how the Sharia protects, uh, protects us. Where does this three triple talaq come from? Just very, very quickly. At the time of Umar ibn al-Khattab, people were making a mockery of the talaq. And rather than saying it once, they were saying it numerous times. So Umar ibn al-Khattab, he actually changed the ruling of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And he said, the people are being hasty in a decision which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them time. So I wish to hold them to account for it. And this is why 
a, a triple talaq, when you say talaq, 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 this is closing the door on the marriage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us. We see there's so much hikmah and wisdom in our sharia. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for afiyah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for love and goodness in our marriages. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for marriages which are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which will be a means of pious and righteous children coming into this world. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Just a couple of announcements. Uh, inshallah, at the end of...